Hi, I'm Ashton, and my cat has come to join me in this video. So if there's a lot of jump cuts, it's probably because he's crawling all over the place and making everything very inconvenient for me. Isn't it? One of the most common arguments against trans people and non-binary... <laughs> One of the most common arguments against trans and non-binary people is the everlasting, obnoxious, there are only two genders, go back to Tumblr. Um, and in this video, I will attempt to debunk both of those arguments. First, we have to understand the difference between sex and gender. Sex is based on your biology, and with it, you're assigned either male or female at birth. Some babies are born intersex with ambiguous genitals, and doctors will often perform surgeries to correct a baby's genitals so that they conform to the standards of male or female. These surgeries are nearly always irreversible, sometimes done without parental consent, and always done without the child having any choice. Intersex issues are a whole other thing that I'd love to talk about in some other video. Anyways, gender is what someone identifies as. Gender is best defined as a construct or an identity. Um, for most people, it does correlate with their sex, but for others, it simply doesn't. In Western society, gender is put into two boxes, girl and boy, male and female. However, throughout history and in cultures other than our Western one, this has rarely ever been the case. But of course, the people that screech there are only two genders are generally quite ignorant on cultures other than their own. Let me just give you a few examples. As I always seem to, there will be multitudes of resources down in the description if you're interested in my sources or you want to learn more about any of these identities. Where did Bear go? Yeah, you know, he's really shy. There's a small island off Indonesia that recognizes five genders, man, woman, Kalali, Kalabi, and Bisu. If I pronounce anything wrong, call me the heck out. Um, I'm very bad with words. I literally have a video about me and pronouncing things wrong. Bisu display a mixture of masculine and feminine traits. They can take on roles of either gender and are highly respected as wise and spiritually important. In our Western society, we may see these people as non-binary or androgynous. The Bisu gender is similar to Hawaii's Mahu gender, the Samoan Fapafine, Tahiti's Maori, the Feminelli of Naples, and so, so many more. All of these are genders in which someone shares masculine and feminine traits, but doesn't necessarily identify as one or the other. And they aren't seen as one or the other either. They're respected as neither male or female. Fafafine are integral to life in Samoan culture. They're highly respected and they aren't uncommon. Every family has one, some families have seven. In all of these cultures and many, many more, there is a respected third, fourth, or even fifth gender. These people beyond the binary are recognized and aren't seen as abominations as non-binary people in Western culture so often are. Perhaps the most commonly cited instance of gender variance in societies other than our own are two spirits. Two spirit is a Native American identity that has existed for a long, long time. Two spirit roles are a strong common thread throughout nearly every native tribe. Intersex people, people designated male or female at birth, any of them can be two-spirit. Each tribe had its own word for two-spirits. Um, two-spirit was implemented in the 1990s as a pushback against Western culture. They were like, no, no, these people aren't gay, they aren't trans, they are two-spirit. A large majority of native tribes had either these three genders, male, female, or two-spirit, while some tribes had up to five. This gender variance is thought to trace back to the people that began to populate the Americas tens of thousands of years ago. I could go on and on about the existence I could go on and on about the existence of non-binary and gender non-conforming identities in history, but this video would be hours long. <laughs> if you want to know more, I would highly recommend all of the links that I've left in the description. To sum that up, gender variance has existed since before your great 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 grandfather was born. You can deny the existence of non-binary genders all you want, but the history is right in front of you. You have no excuse to be ignorant. Even if you don't quite understand what makes someone non-binary or how it feels, that shouldn't stop you from supporting and accepting non-binary people. It's not that hard to just treat them like you'd treat anyone else. If that isn't enough to show you that gender variants existed way before Tumblr, let's list some genderqueer slash gender non-conforming people that aren't your typical young, white, bright-haired person. 
Matilda Sycamore is a 69-year-old genderqueer author and activist. Jeffrey Marsh is 39, a author, journalist, and activist, and is also genderqueer. LJ Roberts is 37. They are a genderqueer textile artist. Kelly Mantle is a 41-year-old actor that is gender fluid. Joel Soloway is a 42-year-old writer, director, and producer that is non-binary. Alec Butler is 58. They are a two-spirit uh, playwright and filmmaker. S.J. Miller is 47, is agender, and is an academic and social justice advocate. Richard O'Brien is a performer, writer, and entertainer. He is 75 years old, and in 2009, he said that he was in between genders and had used estrogen for a decade. Is this getting boring? Because I could go on, but I'm not going to, because if you want to know more, you can go do that research yourself. There isn't an epidemic of trans and genderqueer people. There's simply more awareness. More of us are speaking up. More of us are being vocal, and therefore more people are speaking up against us too. Regardless of whether or not you understand or believe in genders outside the binary, they've existed for far longer than you can imagine, and it isn't hard to just step down from your stubborn high horse of binariness and respect those genders that are outside the binary. No matter how a gender non-conforming person chooses to label themselves trigender, bigender, pangender, a gender, gender queer, gender fluid, it doesn't matter. There's still a person and they still deserve to be treated as such. Even if you don't understand genders outside the binary, and that's fine, you know? You don't have to understand it. You just have to respect the people that have those genders, just like you would respect anyone else. <sighs> okay, goodbye. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will- Bear stop. Goodbye. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will talk to you later, maybe.